Hey team, I'm Greg, and this is Studio 214. Today we finished what we started, a beautiful fall swamp. Here's where we're at, and here's where we're going. So grab your gear, let's move out. We start by adding some bold red. I want to liven up the composition, and some color throughout is a great way to do just that. The swamp is dark enough, so by using red as a shadow color, I'm able to make it really vivid. That's a one inch brush I'm using by the way. It's from the Kevin Hill collection. If you haven't checked out his paintings or his brush line, maybe you should. Paint with Kevin. He's on YouTube. So my central focal point is going to be that bright yellow bush on the left. But I really need something to add a human element to this painting. So I am going to put in an old little bridge in the back. I'm going to keep the colors fairly low value so that it won't compete with where I want your eye to go. What I really want is for your eye to be drawn to the central focal point, which again is the shrubbery. But then once you're there, you will see the bridges more clearly almost like a bonus. I mean, you might see it before, but what really catches your eye is the bright effects of light bouncing off the branches of the bush. I want your eye to be all like, whoa dude, check out the yellow bush back there. Oh sweet, a bridge. It's like your eye comes for the shrubbery, but stays to check out the bridge. If that happens, mission accomplished. You guys, I don't know much about nothing, but I have noticed this. Having a touch of human interaction of some kind, any kind really, really makes the painting memorable. I noticed this a few years back, and maybe y'all did too, but many of the paintings that I really like and admire are the ones that have humans or human activity as part of it, or even as the main subject. Go ahead and take a look. After this video, of course. <laughs> take a look at the paintings you love. I don't think there's any mystery to it. We are humans, and seeing other humans at work or play in our art helps us to relate to it. I think that's as simple as it gets. Personally, I need all the help I can get to communicate what I want the scene to say. And as the artist, if I can't relate to my own painting, how the diddly can I expect anyone else to? Of course, like all things, this is subjective. But I think it's less subjective than other things. You know, like beauty. Absolutely pretty much 100% subjective. As opposed to, say, uh, what colors go well with each other. Still subjective, but color theory tells us maybe it's a little objective too. Takes all types. Some people like nature unaltered, and they don't get off seeing human activity. But that's not me. What about you? What do you like? Do you always try to add a human twist or story to your paintings or art? Do you prefer to see evidence of humans in the art you enjoy? Or maybe you never even thought of it before. Let me know in the comments and let's keep the conversation going. Okay team, so check it out. As alluded to in earlier projects, I want me some eye magnets. What are eye magnets? Well, as the name implies, eye magnets are objects in a painting that serve to draw your eye in a certain direction. They play supporting roles in paintings and serve the central or secondary focal points. What does this mean, and why should I care? Good question. Let's go to the video. I'm using color and strategically placing fallen leaves in such a manner that they point to the central focal. Notice how my yellows and reds contrast with the swamp so they stand out, but are darker and have less value than the colors the same colors have farther back, in the oft-mentioned point of central focus. Ah, yes. Here I am reinforcing the central focal point by brightening up the shrubbery. Don't forget the reflection. I find it's easier to get a good shimmer and reflection when the paint is still wet. Next, it is time to make the leaves on the surface of the pond more interesting. If your eye happens to catch them first, I want them to lead up to the point in which your focal is central. I don't want them too bright, or you guessed it, the point, central, focus, will get all insecure and lash out. The point, focal, central is a diva and demands the attention. Best to avoid the pain and give it to her. She deserves it. And if she doesn't, why is the focal of your central point that particular central focal point? 
Hein Now, I'm going to throw in some burnt sienna, because guess what? The log is a secondary focal point, and an eye magnet, both, together, and the same thing. I want to build up some color and some texture, and the sienna gets both of them done. Now, much like the clap, I'm going to spread it around. Some sienna for you, some for, for you, and some for you. Everyone gets Sienna. Sienna for everyone. Yay! And now back to business. I'm taking my one inch brush and putting some color back in the trees. Does it kind of look like there's a fire in the back? Well, I thought it did. So I'm going to throw some color back in and tone down the brightness of the red with some green. Also, introducing those colors to the mid and foreground will make it look less like fire and more like, well, effects of light that the whole swamp gets to play in. And that's what I'm going for. Ha! <laughs> look! Did you see what I just did? Oh, remember those highlights on the trees? It will be important later, I, I promise. But real quick, can you guys see the spiral that's starting to form? Oh man, it's exciting. It will become very apparent later on, but you can kind of see it now. And now I am reinforcing the boundaries and putting in hard edges to help move your eye around from one thing to the next. I'm not really putting in hard edges. It would be more accurate to say I'm painting in analogous edges or slightly contrasting edges. To me, hard edges are when contrasting colors and or, uh, usually and though, extreme light and dark colors are right next to each other, like a pure white highlight on a dark or even black background. You can't get a much harder edge than that. Another example would be green and red. Not quite as stark of a contrast as black and white, but it will still stand out. And honestly, those type of edges need to be used very selectively, like hardly at all. It will draw all the attention to that edge. So use it wisely. Usually the only place I like to put hard edges is in the place I want to draw the most attention to. That's right, the good old focal of central point. If you look at the trees where I'm putting highlight, you will see that the colors around the trees, whether it be the background or even other parts of the same tree, are different colors but they all have high value, so your eye can tell a difference. But it doesn't scream, look at me, like hard edges do. This is important because I want secondary focal points to help move your eye around. I want each secondary focal point to be the brightest and have the most defined edge in that area immediately surrounding that point. But it can't be brighter or have more contrast than the central focal, you dig? So the first thing to catch your eye is the central point. And when looking at it, I want your eye to notice the secondary points and be drawn to them, which in turn reveals more focal points and your eye goes round and round. More on that later. Okay, now I'm putting in some more brightness on the left. This will possibly be another secondary focal point, maybe even a central, or I guess I should say alternate focal point. Eh. Some people respond well to different colors, so I thought it would be fun to make another point of interest left adjacent to the focal central point and change the color. That way, if you respond to the color red, the left side may attract you at first, along with the leaves. Notice they are red and kind of pointed to the left, whilst conversely, if you are attracted to yellow, then boy howdy you in luck. The yellow leaves in the pond point right to it. Not by accident, my friend. No sir.
Now I'm just trying to make the trunks fit the scene a bit better and give them a more realistic and dynamic appearance by changing up and adding more color. Not a lot. These trees aren't going to prom, so they don't need much. Just a bit more. That goes for their reflection too. Alright team, now it's time to turn some attention to these leaves. Some of you out there will notice the leaves first off, and, and that's cool. Knowing that's the case, I need to make them so that the effect they have is what I want them to be. And in this case, that means eye magnets. Which means time to play with color. I need to get some highlight and shadow on them to give them some real dimension. Then lastly, I need to spread some of that color to other parts of the painting. Be careful of the highlight on them leaves. This isn't a hooker's funeral, and those aren't supposed to be flowers. Or whatever. Leave some mystery. Maybe it is a hooker's funeral. At a swamp. Whatever, man. I learned not to judge in Georgia. Hey, are you guys digging the music? Because the best music isn't on the radio. It's right here on YouTube and other sites. If you didn't know, I write all the music for this channel, and it's a ton of fun. So I made another channel, Studio 214 Music, where I post it all, plus other music-related videos like a gig vlog and guitar rack build. It's pretty cool, and it rocks. So check it out, would ya? Now it is time to put in some swamp moss. You know, I have no idea what that stuff is called. If you do, let me know in the comments, would you? I saw it all the time in the deep south, over all damn swamp. Mm. So what swamp would be complete without some of that moss on all the trees? Well, the ones touching the water anyway. I kept on teasing the overall plan I was trying to accomplish throughout this painting. So now, it's time to tell you all what I was trying to do. I want your eye to go back to the central focal first. You might, and probably will, notice the leaves in the pond, but hopefully they will be passed as you go to the central focal. Then, hopefully, you might notice the tree on the right. Then you might follow the highlight on the leaves on top as well as the fire background to the other side, to the tree trunk jutting out. I then want your eye to follow the swamp moss down to the pond and go right, skirting the top of the leaves to the fallen log and then back around again. And there's the spiral. Hopefully you saw it before I explained it, <laughs> but if not, hey, let me know in the comments. What would you have done differently? Oh yeah, also, check out the bottom right corner. Not much is there. And that's by design. <laughs> I couldn't come up with anything there that wouldn't draw attention from my spiral and the movement I want the viewer to experience, so I left it sparse and uninteresting. The space needs to be broken up a bit, so I'm going to cheat and use my name just to put something in there. It breaks up the space and is an acceptable, albeit cheap way to say, nothing to see here folks. Oh hey look, a bridge. Well, hey team, I think we are done. This painting was awesome. Thanks so much for hanging out. A fall swamp. Like I said, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So if you like swamps too, join the team and let me know. New painting videos every Thursday, new critique, question and answer, and technique and training videos every Tuesday. I hope to see you back for both. As for me, I'm going to the house. For Studio 214, I'm Greg. See you next time.